Greetings and salutations, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, everyone who has joined me. It is May the 1st, and I figured what better time than today to do a full backyard garden tour to show you guys what is popping off in the springtime of my garden in Houston, Texas, Zone 9B. So it's your host with the most, Paul Plant 2, always reminding you that Earth is my planet. Earth is my planet. Okay, guys, so where we are starting is going to be in my backyard meadow area. So last year, I had to level off the backyard and this was nothing but dirt. So in the meantime, I spread a bunch of wildflower seeds. And so I do finally have a good accumulation of wildflowers popping up in this area. As y'all can see, man, there are a ton of buttercups just abundant in the area. There are some beautiful blanket flowers just dotting the landscape. I have some Coreopsis that are popping up as well and an extremely wild dog by the name of Foxy who is a blue healer. But y'all can see, man, I think this might be a sunflower that is coming up or maybe a black eyed Susan. Now, one flower that really is standing out is on the back of all these bricks, which I did get from a knockdown house and I laid down to create some nice beds to differentiate the flower slash lawn area into my food forest slash urban oasis jungle, okay? But this flower is another Coreopsis. It is wondrous, dude. This thing is just straight bussing. Um, it also is called tick seed, but y'all can see, man, this has beautiful petals, nice kind of brown burgundy interior, and it is absolutely exquisite with the amount of gold foliage and interest that it adds. And I guess that wouldn't be foliage if it's flower petals I'm referring to. But nevertheless, man, that is the area with the wildflowers and with the lawn. And as y'all can see, I do need to have some more wildflowers in this area and I need the lawn to fill in right here. But that was straight up like one foot of dirt that I had to remove. So it takes time to fill things in. And I don't want to plug the area with grass when instead I could put wildflowers. And guess what, guys? It's starting to rain. What a bipolar day. Cool, so that rain only lasted about five minutes. It might rain again, we'll see. It's been sunny today, partially cloudy, and now rainy, so literally all the bases are covered. But we're gonna continue the tour in this back little corner where I have this ham and eggs lantana. Now this guy put on quite a show, and right now it just has a bunch of little pod clusters of seeds. When this guy had all its flowers, it looked absolutely amazing and pollinators were going crazy on it. So that's super cool. Also in this back little fence area, there were some shrubs which I removed. Stay tuned, there's gonna be a whole video on that. I planted a couple of citrus back there. Stay tuned, there's gonna be a video on that. But all my apple trees back here, which I have three kind of forming a hedge, are in flower, which is super cool. And then you guys can tell right here, some flowers were pollinated and there are some baby apples right there. So this is an Anna apple variety. And then we have a golden door set, which it appears is about to pop off with some flowers as well. And it did have a couple of flowers on it previously, which are turning into some apples. So we are gonna have some apples potentially this year. This is only, I think the second year these guys will be in the ground. As y'all can see, a lot of these flowers have been pollinated and that is the benefit of having wildflowers in the yard is it can bring in some pollinators. Now I also planted some native fruit species, some persimmon trees right here along the fence line. I'm not too concerned whether they bear fruit or not. I just kind of want to see what will happen. And I also want to arch them right where this backyard gate is. So we have yet another one right here. So we have a dual wheeled akimbo dynasty with a couple of those. And hold on, my dog is looking so cute right now on this lawn chair. I just gotta capture this. What's up, big boy? All right. Now he's looking his toe. Whatever. I promise you guys, man, my dogs do the most for these videos. But continuing on, as y'all can see, man, the cross vine is starting to run up this trellis from my most recent video where I did plant some vines. It is doing well. I had no idea that people hated Virginia creeper to the extent in which they do, but it is not invasive. I'm just gonna put that out there right now. I'll rant about it in some other videos coming up. Now we have this philodendron, which I accidentally thought was a um, Monstera deliciosa. So I was thinking I'd get fruit from that. It's not, okay? It was a baby plant when I threw it in in the winter time and now it has gotten much bigger and I can actually see what it is. Um, continuing on, I found this guy in the trash, which I hung some bromeliads on, which is super cool. Oh, there's an airplane. Now behind the bromeliads, I have this sea grape plant, which I also got in the winter. I planted it, I thought it died 
but this guy is just flourishing. I mean, look at all the leaves on it. All, actually, everything looks super cool now that it rained because you kind of got a little bit of gloss and sauce coating on the leaves. And yeah, I mean, that plant says it needs full sun, but guess what? It's in a heavily shaded environment and it appears to be doing fine. So I don't really listen too much of the instructions that are on the plants when I purchased them from the garden center. And now kind of getting into some of the food forest area back here, we have this loquat tree, which I planted for the foliage. I never have put a loquat in my mouth, so I cannot give you guys a deliciousness score or rating on the fruit, but the foliage alone is just aesthetic architectural. It's evergreen and it can survive um, harsh winters. I had one look like it died during the Texas freeze, but it came back. And then next up, man, we have a fruit tree that does have fruit on it. And that is this kumquat. Now this kumquat tree probably is the best growing out of all the citrus I put behind me in this entire area. And that is astounding. Now you guys can eat the rind. It does not taste super bitter like a lot of citrus rind would. You eat the whole thing, you get some, mm, some sweet of the rind, some sour of the interior to a perfect fruit combination. And I'm telling you guys, this thing had a bunch of fruit. I shared some with the Xfinity worker that came by. So that was cool, but there's still some on there. And I just like snacking on it here and there whilst I'm in the garden. And then you just spit out the seeds. I know that was attractive and hopefully we'll get some more plants in the future. Now, obviously when I have these fruit trees in the ground, I have to underplant them just a little bit. And I did make a video where I dug some palm trees up off the side of the highway, some sable miners. And dude, they have not been doing super well. They are still alive. Here is one. I have no idea what is going on with this dude. It just takes forever. And then you have another small one, which does have some leaves, which actually look like they're doing horribly right now. So guys, I, I just don't be knowing what these plants are doing sometimes. I mean, they're still alive. They'll pop out with green, but they take forever to grow, especially since I did transplant them out of where they were growing on the side of the road to this area, but they're still alive. They're just not thriving yet now something that is thriving though is this amazing tropical sage which i did transplant out of this area of my yard it was getting a little bit too much sun it does like being in partially shaded to fully shaded areas so i did plant it right here along the brick edge and you guys can tell there are red flowers popping off it and i planted about four different ones some of which are obviously way bigger and doing way better and this is one of them oh my god like look at this specimen just adding a pop of flair to the garden i found this broken pot in the trash that i threw behind it and i really am finally starting to create that lost jungle aesthetic which i want and i'm creating the jungle aesthetic with a couple of tropical plants such as these cannas which i got on sale at the houston garden centers for like five bucks a piece in the winter time i planted them they died to the ground but guess what boom they erupted from the tubers shout out my own sound effects and then i also planted this yucca which is a native species so i like mixing the natives with the tropicals with the fruit trees to really have a super diverse all-encompassing jungle that can benefit a lot of different insects birds and wildlife and birds love this plant right here which is the american beauty berry the calicarpa americana and it has wondrous berries that pop off it does lose its leaves but guess what, man, it is filling up. And this is another one that I got on sale at Lowe's in the winter time because it lost all its leaves and people thought it was dead. I know what it was though. And that is why you guys should research some plants. If you guys see something that looks cool, just take a picture of it and see what is going on. Now, some more fruit trees, man. We have some plums going on right here. This is their second year. Or I think they're one and a half years old. Actually, I planted them last year in the earth and they do have a ton of leaves. I have not seen these guys flower yet. We have two different varieties right next to each other so they can cross pollinate. We also have this grapefruit, which has been iffy. This has been probably the citrus that has done the worst or looked the worst in the garden just because it has super bright colored leaves. I have to water it a lot and I think it's because my dogs always run along this fence line and get in barking altercations with the neighbor's dogs. And guess what guys, we're gonna take a quick break 
because it's raining again. Now, speaking of the neighbor's dog, so my dogs would dig all along the bottom of this fence line to bark at the neighbor's dogs. And I saw some guys cutting down some trees in front of the local city hall. So I went and I just hauled all the logs and I put them up against the bottom of the fence so the dogs cannot dig underneath there. They will naturally break down over time. We'll have some fungi. I might actually put some desirable types of edible fungi um, inoculate them if you will into the wood and then just have them grow over time so that is another key thing to do or another pro tip I guess or semi pro I've only been gardening for about two years now continuing on in the food forest tree layer we have an amazing key lime citrus tree which is right here in my hand now this guy again is showing some signs of wear and tear on the leaves it might not be in the most perfect place but it did have some key limes last year and my dumb self thought they were limes that were going bad because they were yellow. That's a blue jay. Because they were yellow, but that's the color of key limes. Bruh. All right, so you guys can hear this blue jay going crazy behind me. And that is another cool aspect about having this food forest slash these really old canopy trees in my yard, which are live oak trees is that there have been a ton of bird species in the backyard. There's an owl that lives in these trees. I have two pairs of mating um, yellow crown night herons that also live in the trees. There's been blue jays, cardinals, and there's even been a hawk that looked like it wanted to eat my soul in the tree. Now, continuing on into this area of the bed, this is probably one of the spaces in the garden beds that gets some of the most light, so I did heavily plant this area with fruit bearing shrubs, ground covers, vines. So we have some Okinawan spinach, which you guys can eat the leaves of, and they do prefer a subtropical climate. And they have amazing purple um, coloration underneath the leaves. And I'm probably gonna put these in the ground as time goes on. And then we also have some blackberries. Now I found another log in my neighborhood, which I propped up on these rocks to create a kind of natural trellis-like area. And y'all can see there is a blackberry growing right here on this vine so that is awesome and then intermingled is a tropical sage which i didn't even plant this dude just sprung up from seed so that is super cool i didn't even throw seed over here man this dude just has a mind of its own now another plant that really surprised me is actually this peach tree which i planted in the yard now it's a florida peach this guy has one two three four five six different peaches on it see there's a sixth one right over there and guess what is it in full sun? No, this is in like part sun and it is still popping off with peaches. And the fact that it actually is bearing fruit in a less than ideal environment according to its tag is awesome. So you guys don't always have to take the tags at full truth and face value. You can kind of intermingle um, the plant species into areas that don't receive as much light. They might be slower to grow, they might flower less, but they still can bear fruit. And especially if you're like me, you don't want to cut down some hundred year old oak trees. This is a great peach to grow, all right, if you're in a subtropical area. Now, I also have some Thai plants in the back. I probably wouldn't have put those there just because this is a shady area of the garden and the dark color kind of lends to it still looking like a dark space. And then another couple of plants that surprised me, especially being in the part shade area, were actually these bluebees. So we have some blueberry bushes and y'all can tell they have blueberries all up on them. Now, last year I made the mistake of not eating the blueberries soon enough and birds got them but we have one blueberry bush, two blueberry bushes, and yet a third blueberry bush. And this one did have berries, but they look quite sad and appear to have fallen off. And it also is in the deepest amount of shade. So, I mean, it is what it is, but I had to get two different species just to really help the cross pollination. Now, a couple more fruit trees that have popped off with a ton of flowers, and I wish I recorded. Um, we have a clementine right here, which is covered in a ton of baby fruit. And I did put this clementine tree in an area that gets a ton of sun. Now, again, I am gonna need to cut some of these branches above my head of this oak tree just to let in even more light to this area. But I mean, this guy is definitely going to bear some fruit this year. And again, this tree has only been in the ground for about one year thus far. Blessed. Now a tree that's been in the ground for a couple of years is this Moringa. And I have to say that this Moringa tree in Houston, Texas is super inconsistent. But one thing it always does is no matter how cold it gets, it grows back from the trunk 
or from the roots. During the huge Texas freeze, it died to the ground and it came back and was in a pot. That's super crazy. And then again, it looked dead in the winter, but it is back with some leaves. And this is a super nutritionally dense plant. So I definitely recommend um, growing it, throwing it in smoothies or whatever the case may be, whatever suits your fancy and lifestyle. Grow some Moringa, but don't have the highest expectations if you guys live in, in a cooler climate than like Miami, Florida area, okay? Now, underneath the Clementine and the Moringa, we again have a yucca species that is doing super well behind the Coryopsis. We also have some bulbs which I planted that are popping up. These are just some species of lilies. I have three of them right there. And then I also have another one right here. Now there is more tropical sage. Once again, whatever grows, I'll transplant into more desirable areas. And here's another example of a huge tropical sage right in front of this statue heron that I got at a garage sale. Now one plant that's not doing well is this Meyer lemon. It did flower profusely, but you guys can see the leaves are definitely not looking the best. So I think there is just a nutrient deficiency in the soil for this citrus. So I'm going to probably fertilize it and do a couple things to see what will happen. But truly out here, it is survival of the fittest. And one fruit tree that is super fit in this area is this mulberry tree. Now this guy is absolutely huge. It does keep getting ransacked and absolutely obliterated by the wind, but the trunk is standing not tall, but at an obtuse angle, slightly firm. So I am probably gonna mount some type of rope or string to hold it upright against the fence. So I definitely need to do that. Now coming into a super dark shaded area, we have more canna lilies that are absolutely doing their thing. We have a small duo of flamingos that I failed to mention when I was talking about the birds and some more dark burgundy canna lilies and some gladioluses that I also planted. Now from seed, we have another tree, the avocado. This guy is doing extremely well in this dark shaded area. You have the Fascia japonica, which is filling in. And of course, the native species always shine. Calicarpa americana number two is lush, is full, is thick. And then we also have like the Florida dogwood, which I thought was dead, but you guys can tell, man, it's just a late bloomer, something like me in seventh grade. It is finally starting to hit its growth spurt. I hit mine. I was five, six in ninth grade. And then in 10th grade, I was like six foot. So, you know, some of us are dogwoods, man. It's all good. You're a dogwood. All right, then continuing down, man, you have this Akuba, which is looking nice. It is heavily shaded by the natives, which I don't care if this guy grows slower. I want the natives to again shine. They provide more benefits for the animals, for the wildlife. And we have another transplant masterclass, a masterpiece. You have this mulberry tree, which was like legit this tall, okay? And now like, look at it. You kidding me? You kidding me? This guy is probably like three feet tall already, which is amazing. We have a button bush. It has not gone to flower yet. Another native plant species banger. Three more Thai plants, which look absolutely sad in the back. And then you have a strawberry bush. And this guy did flower and it looked amazing with the fruits. Did I capture that footage? No, I'm sorry. Sometimes I am caught slipping couple more Elysium and these guys are just looking super healthy super lovely look at all the new green growth on them oh my god guys wow astonishing and then uh in the back man you have a bunch of Virginia creeper which again seem to freak out a good portion of my audience but it is what it is it provides nice shelter for birds food for birds and the berries provides a ton of habitat and food for sphinx moths Okay, and they pollinate flowers at night. So if you guys are wondering why your shit ain't fruiting, maybe grow some native plant species that will bring in pollinators, all right? It is beneficial. And then one of the avocados I planted from seed that is doing the best is this guy right here. And again, man, it'll probably take five years before these guys bear some fruit, but I'm just seeing what happens and nothing is better than growing something from seed and seeing it just develop over time. If you guys have a lack of patience around the verge of like death, maybe plant something a little bit more mature from the garden center and uh, get the fruit faster, all right? Now in the corner area, we do have the Sable Miner next to this oddly decorative raccoon stand and then a Nava fern, which I still don't know which type of fern this is, but I mean, look at this new leaf, thing is big. All right, so now in this corner of the yard, we have my compost bin in which I built from scratch. Absolutely is coming through and I did stain it the same color as my fence, which is a nice pecan finish. 
Nice Mexican fan palm in the corner, which I did not plant. This guy was here when I bought the property. Hold it down. It looks super nice and lends to the tropical aesthetic. And then underneath this oak tree, we have some uh, Turk's Cap hibiscus. It actually smelled like nothing. That was all just a stage sound effect coming out of your boy, okay? But in this area, man, we have all these circular bed spaces which i created i thought this looked super cool and it feels like i don't know like some type of abandoned well area i just like arranging bricks in cool non-square patterns all right so the more organic kind of curvaceous lines i feel like it does lend to a more organic interesting environment so this looks very cool back here um i did plant the turks cap and it is absolutely thriving and I planted in front of the Turk's cap an avocado that is doing absolutely horribly. I think it's getting way too much sunlight in this area in the morning. So it is kind of making the leaves very bright and baby avocados like being shaded in their infancy. Now coming around this corner by my brand new super expensive AC unit, we have the free 99 garden bed and this guy is cracking off. So you had some walking irises and the flowers on those guys were super, super cool and interesting looking. They do kind of last for about a day or two and they unfortunately have burnt out when I'm doing this, but I caught some footage, so enjoy that. And then we have this amazing angel trumpet, which again, looked like it died when it got super cold, but this dude is thriving, surviving, and looking nice, thick, juicy, and vivacious. We also have an elephant ear. You have the uh, iron plant right there, the cast iron plant, some bromeliads. So everything has been surviving in this area. And now last and certainly not least, while I am running out of breath, we're going to briefly talk about the pond. I'm gonna make a full pond update where I do plant out the pond, but a bunch of stuff is thriving. And that is because I am dumping the pond water onto the plant and it legit is like fish emulsion, home grown. And uh, yeah, dude, I mean, it's like giving the plants steroids, okay? So y'all can see the parsley has gotten super huge. It's like a full complete bush. So that's amazing. Now I did have to cut off the uh, top of it because it was bolting about to go to flower. You have a tomato plant, which I did not plant. My dog, this guy Ranger right here, puts tomatoes in his mouth, bites them over here if he can manage to like uh, counter surf and grab one. And he ate one right here and shout out to him because now I have a tomato plant. So maybe he is growing his own organic tomatoes. I did plant this, uh, nice jalapeno and it does have some big peppers that i need to go ahead and pop in my mouth super soon you have some irises and this louisiana iris had a beautiful purple flower you have the frog fruit which is a native ground cover that is absolutely going nuts i mean it is so luscious so full in all the areas that i did go ahead and plant it it even is running into the pond and now it's starting to naturally filter the water with its roots I also did plant a couple of Wondering Jew purple hearts in the pot and they are vibrant. They have came out of the woodworks and really make the waterfall feature look cool. The guava definitely growing is super awesome. The Mexican sage has a ton of flowers. This is like a pollinator haven in this back corner and then some Thai plants which were on the verge of death. Some Cordyline fruticosa are now coming back to life with all of that fish emulsion homegrown fertilizer. Whew. Okay guys, I have been talking probably for like 30 minutes straight. Maybe it's less than that. It just feels like a lot of time, but hopefully you guys did enjoy my backyard garden tour, at least the spring rendition. Maybe I'll do one in the summer or I'll do little portions of the backyard. Um, yeah. I don't even know what I'm saying at this point, my tongue hurts. But yeah, guys, maybe I'll just do sections of the yard in terms of giving tours in the future. Who knows, but hopefully y'all did enjoy this video. If you did, please go ahead and like it. It's free to do, it helps me out. Subscribe if you guys are not already. I appreciate everyone who is new to the channel and that has been watching. I mean, it's been a mission to plant every single thing that's back here. And of course, if you guys want more in-depth info, I have a video about each and every single thing I planted. So just go back in the back catalog, watch some other videos until I upload again. And remember, Earth is my planet. Earth is my planet. I'm going to catch you guys next time. Stay tuned and get to gardening your damn self. Peace. Songs, even a bloody life I roost
And I'm in it to win it, so I'm somebody that you should get used to Earth is my planet.